Hey y'all, welcome back to Not Quite Homesteading. Today we're in my kitchen and I'm sharing another Azure Standard haul with y'all. So I wanted to share the things that I'm continuing to buy from Azure and I, I will talk a little bit about um, some of the things that I purchased the last time, not all of them, but um, some things that I really, 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 really liked and some things that um, I was kind of like maybe not so sold on, but I did want to share this with you guys and at the end I have a nice little surprise unboxing for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump right into this because um, yeah. We are preparing for, uh, I would say like the year ahead. So I'm buying a lot of things in bulk. Um, bulk shopping is something that I've always done. I probably in the last like few years, I stopped doing it as much because being where we are, um, I think we have access to like a lot of like fresh local goods. And I was trying, you know, to, I guess, kind of reel in the bulk buying with the idea that you know, if we wanted something, stores are like really in such close proximity. You know, we have farmers markets, you know, there are farms close enough for us to go to. And I say farms, there's really, there's a farm, but there are a few farms. Um, there's a full farm and then we have like, kind of like seasonal you pick farms, but there's enough stuff around us that it was like, we tried the, you know, buy it as you need it kind of method, but I'm going to be honest, um, with food prices the way they are, you know, with grocery prices kind of rising at ridiculous rates every few weeks, it seems. And just like for my own general comfort, I really prefer the method of bulk buying. And so kind of transitioning back to that, um, it's taken me some time to really get back into that routine. The other thing is in like shopping Azure, um, and kind of seeing like what people, uh, you know, I guess value about the service and, you know, what they're offering. Um, I saw an opportunity to bulk buy, but also bulk buy in a way that fits my family size, as well as, you know, our preferred eating needs. You know, not everything for me has to be organic, but if I can get certain things organic or if I can get better quality goods, for the same amount or you know potentially even a little bit less than what i'm paying for goods that i would purchase like you know at a, a standard uh grocery store then i'm absolutely going to try to do that i'm all about saving a dollar where i can and um that is kind of how i ended up here back on the bulk buy for azure so what i'm doing right now is really trying to get our bulk food storage back to the place that I am used to having it at and um you know that run in with also trying to build out a garden and you know make sure that you know we're also keeping up with just our general grocery <laughs> expenses um things that we do have to buy locally and buy fresh on a monthly basis um it's been a little challenging but we are in now what i consider like comfort food season and this is where we spend a lot of time really like eating at home you know everybody's cooking more you're baking more and i think it's important to me to have those staples on hand so i am going to share with you guys what i picked up today i will share a little bit about some of the products that um i think i've repurchased and some things that you know i noticed and observed and things that you know I, I guess I like <laughs> about the service and um, you know just in terms of things that what previously what are the things I would really stay away from this go round I did stock up on some more dry some more dry goods I pick up tapioca pearls and I pick these up because I do buy these like little um, mixes and things from nuts.com and I want to try making boba tea so i figured it'd be good to have these on hand but i also like tapioca pudding so i want to attempt to make that and i figured this would be something like pretty cool to have on hand whether or not i'll keep this as kind of like an ongoing ingredient that will remain to be seen because um it's really going to depend on how much pudding and how much uh boba tea i decide i want to drink <laughs> I picked up some raw hazelnuts and 
I wanted these because while I don't typically eat hazelnuts, just like to eat them, um, I do like French vanilla syrup as well as um, there is a French vanilla like granola recipe that I make that is like out of this world. And I wanted to see if I could go ahead and um, in addition to having these for baking, be able to make my own French vanilla like syrup so that I can always have that on hand to be able to make the things that I like to make with that. I'm not really big on flavored like coffees, like hot coffee anymore. That was something I did when I was much, much younger. But I do from time to time like to do like cold brew or iced coffee and I really like those flavors. So if it's like cold coffee, I tend to like lean more towards like flavoring, but um, not so much in hot coffee. So variety of uses for these and um, I imagine I will eat some fresh because I do like to just have um, nuts as a part, a general part of like my diet. I picked up some pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds, um, I don't really eat these either as just like a general eating nut, but I do like to bake with them. Um, these would be good for me for like yogurt, like that kind of stuff to top them off with and or, you know, maybe top off like a baked good or a soup or something. But I wanted to have those on hand because of course it is pumpkin season and while I've already been in pumpkin season, I've made my little pumpkin cream cheese muffins and all that good stuff. Um, I haven't done my pumpkin spice, what is that thing called? Like my pumpkin spice creamer. So I do wanna do that, but you know, we're, we're in it and I do wanna enjoy it while we're here before cranberry season gets underway, which is, I think we're kinda in the transition phase right now. I picked up some cannellini beans. So cannellini beans, I also picked up some small red beans and some great northern beans, which I have back here. So I kinda like rounded out my um, dried beans with this purchase. I think the only thing I have left to order are chickpeas, but I did have some chickpeas on hand already, so I didn't see the need to order them right now. I probably will order those in like um, another two months or so when I place my next order. But I referenced just being able to buy like in bulk in a way that suits my family size. So one of the things I really like about Azure in terms of how they set up their bulk, they have like different sizes for you to be able to kind of select what kind of bulk you want. And let's say I'll take like beans for example. Um, I think there are like one of two ways this goes. You can either do like what they have like a uh, in some cases like a 36 ounce bag or something like that, which is about three pounds. So like if you were one person, but you like to like bulk buy, then obviously you don't need 25 pounds of beans. A family of two, we don't need 25 pounds of each individual bean, but they have five pound bags. I think in some cases they may have like 10 pound bags or you can buy like multiples of the five pound bags. And then in some cases they have 25. I'm not sure if the beans go up to 50. I know, I think the, the maybe like the rices or something does to that effect, or maybe it's flour, but being able to say, okay, well, I like to have all these beans on hand, but I don't need 25 pounds of each bean. And sometimes when you buy in bulk, that's kind of like what you're getting. It's either like, you know, 10, 15, 25 pounds, or you end up with something like a case of maybe 20 or 24 one pound packs of beans. So I really, really, and I really, and I mean, I really like the fact that they have these in smaller quantities, but what would be considered bulk for the family size that I have. So it allows me to stock up and store, but not so much that I end up wasting stuff. The good thing about this, and um, one of the things I'm gonna be doing is I will be drying, like I will be putting these aside dry, but I am going to um, try something 
to have them ready so like I think in some of my um I don't know if I mentioned it in some of my previous videos but I do take like beans sometimes I'll make them and then I'll put them in a mason jar and like freeze them so I'll have some ready and available so I want to um kind of work on not necessarily having the bag sit around for like the dry beans that can't fit into the containers I have but instead anything that's left over that doesn't fit in those containers putting them in kind of like ready to use form so that we can just have them ready for when we need those quick meals. I picked up more cheeses. So I will say having um, tried their cheeses, the cheese is probably my number one absolute love it, must have. If you're gonna buy anything from them and you wanna buy in bulk, buy the cheeses the cheese that they get whoever is producing the cheeses for them when i say the flavor the softness the melting quality does not compare to anything that you get in the store and i will say there are brands of store cheeses that i really like um cabot is one of them of course like cracker barrel has been around for a long time i have zero issues with cracker barrel cheeses but I, I do really like cabbage cheeses and you know I even like Sargento as a brand like I like their cheeses but honey when I tell you the melting quality on these cheeses the flavor on these cheeses are top-notch and absolutely absolutely worth the price I bought the um Monterey Jack cheese as well as um, some Havarti cheese and the Monterey Jack cheese I had this in my last order that cheese now i like i like these typically for just like snacking like monterey jack cheese i will put these sometimes in like queso or something like that but when i say the flavor on this cheese i don't think i've ever tasted monterey jack cheese it's flavorful and um when i put it in like i think we had made like taco bowls or something like that and then um you know something else that was it was like a, a mexican style dish <sighs> i was so so pleased with those i picked up a five pound log of mild cheddar cheese and the last time i purchased this i purchased the sharp cheddar we have gone through almost all of that like cheese because because i had purchased it i wasn't really buying sliced cheeses at the store like I usually do. So that was kind of like one of our only cheese options. And like the cheese is really, really good. And I was just like, you know what? We have it here, we need to use it. So I was just like, no way that I was just gonna go buy like extra like sliced cheese. So that's what we've been using. But we made some queso with that and the queso was really, really good. But I do feel like mild cheddar works better for things like queso. Um, things that you need like really really mellow flavors in and you need like good melting quality um, sharp cheddar can sometimes be a, a tad grainy because it is a really sharp stiff cheese but I want to try the mild cheddar and this is probably something I'll keep on hand more so for like like those sandwiches and things like that um there's nothing wrong with sharp cheddar i will eat it if i feel like it i think there are certain things like grilled cheeses for sure when you're making mac and cheese those kinds of things when you really want like that punch of flavor from the cheese a sharp or extra sharp cheddar will really like fit the mold for that but mild cheddar is really good for things when you're making like mellowed dishes and you don't want that like just kind of bite on your tongue I picked up these peach nectar juices. Now, this is new to me, this like product. Um, I am a huge fan of like nectar juices and typically I would buy them from, you know, uh, a famous brand who I shall not name on this channel. But, you know, there are things that, there are certain decisions we have to make about, you know, who we purchase from based on, you know, very, various different things, right? And, you know, um, I'm looking for some alternatives for nectars, such as like guava nectar, mango nectar, 
peach nectar or all that good stuff so this was the first time i had seen anything like that and while it is more expensive um i would much rather support uh i guess you can say a uh, more like sustainable like company of sorts and um yeah that's kind of where i'm at with that so if you do have any recommendations on like brands that make really good like nectars um from like mango guava like tropical fruits that kind of stuff uh, please leave that in the comments down below for me because that is like one of the main things that I like to drink and you know I don't know that I've, I'm sold yet on paying $25 for a case of these and I'll be um pretty forward since my last video and it was like y'all almost immediately after the last video Azure raised their prices so it's funny because I talked about in that video too you know like how I think influencers as valuable as they have been and are to the community that they serve um i think it comes with a detriment to cost on some things right because we create this demand for products and then as a result you know companies end up raising their prices because now they're trying to meet this demand that they weren't used to meeting which puts more strain on their um you know labor chains it puts more strain on their supply chains and the people producing the product so you know now they're starting to have to produce at i guess like a faster pace as fast as they can for not ruining the quality of the product and then um you know trying to meet those demands and you know it kind of forces those prices up of course and then not barring like any economic circumstances that are going on but saying that to say if you were interested in azure um do note that they have raised their prices since my last video since my last purchase and you know it is something to consider while um everything is absolutely going up um you gotta make decisions when you're talking about you know 25 dollars for six bottles of juice I picked up this safe catch tuna so this is I've never had this um this is non-gmo project verified um I didn't even know this part but it's I guess American Pregnancy Association the official tuna so I guess if you need it like you know protein or something I know that like um when you're you know having a baby there are certain things that you might be limited in eating. They are pointing out that, um, I guess that they are safe for uh, pregnant women to eat. It's Whole30 approved and it's certified paleo. Um, the other thing, which for me, this is like critically important to me when I am buying seafood, that it is sourced sustainably. Um, and one of the things I look for, and it's not 100%, but any seafood that is of good quality should be traceable y'all so if you didn't know that if you're someone that likes seafood um seafood should always be traceable if it is not traceable it is probably not good quality but there is an organization um it's it's an msc certification and it's basically you know an organization um that certifies that however the food is sourced it is being done in a way that it is not detrimental to our ecosystem um they have in recent years they have definitely started to include like farm raised like fisheries um i am not a huge fan of farm raised like fishes the only knowing knowingly like farm raised fish that i eat is catfish and um you know if you're not aware of that that is the only way that fish is allowed like catfish is allowed to be sold in the u.s um if somebody ever proclaims to you that catfish is wild um just don't eat it <laughs> so that's one of the things that's important to me so i've been looking and testing out like um tuna 
So they had this, it was something I wanted to try and it's funny because I start building my cart like immediately after I do my purchases and when I put this in the cart at first it was one price and then of course I ended up paying more for it because they raised their prices in the middle of that but um I'm test I want to test this out I'm testing out like Aldi's like brand of skipjack tuna but I do look for um pole long caught you know definitely sustainable fisheries and making sure that we're not we're being friendly to um the ecosystems that provide us food i picked up this think pink wild pink salmon um this is pure alaska salmon company so this is something also that i felt was a tad pricey but all you know you gotta try and see what works um i'd rather pay for quality but you know i do have my limits there too as far as like how far i'm willing to go to pay for certain things um but this is product of usa this is from alaska and pink salmon is something like can't pink salmon is something well pink salmon is something you you really only get in a can but um they have a very specific season for when they are what uh birthed i guess and i think if i'm if i remember correctly it only happens once every few years so i picked this up i do like to have like canned salmon on hand as well for things like salmon cakes or you make like salmon burgers um i rarely eat it like straight out the can like a tuna salad or anything like that but i did pick that up because i want to try that I picked up more of the Gracious, what is this? Gracious Vat Cultured Butter. I do always get my butter unsalted. Um, this was the butter that I purchased the last time. I had a young lady ask in the comments from my last video um, if the butter was good. At that point, I had not tasted it. This butter is absolutely delicious. Um, European butter, I don't know what the process is for how they churn their butter, but... Um, one of the things that typically is a sign of a good quality butter is the color. Usually it's like deep yellow, um, really rich in like carotenes and stuff. This butter is not like European butter. I've never known it to have that like richness. It is pretty pale and I think that has something to do with the process, but the flavor on this butter is immaculate. So. I did want to try, they have like a butter from like Rumiano that I want to try that kind of has those like other characteristics of like that really deep rich yellow, but they ran out of it before I got my um, order. So I ended up adding this to the cart and I want to try that one because um, it's a little less expensive than this one and you also can order it in a much larger palette. So the most you can order for this is a 12 pack. Um, you get 12 eight ounce bars. The Rumiano one, I think you can get something like 30 in a case. And I would much rather have the 30 on hand. But for the young woman that asked, this is absolutely delicious. To me, it is worth the price. Um, butter is another one of those things right now that the price is kind of nearly outrageous but you know if i have to make the decision to pay 450 in store for an eight ounce thing of Kerrygold or five bucks i'd rather get something that um is just a little bit higher quality and Kerrygold makes the butter but something that's a little bit higher quality if I'm virtually gonna pay the same thing or if I can get it for just a few cents less. And then the last thing I picked up was some coconut milk. So I usually pick up my coconut milk from Thrive Market, but I wanted to get it in bulk because I do use coconut milk quite a bit these days. Um, I really like it, like I like it in smoothies um we tend to make like a lot of like drinks and stuff like that and it's just a staple and plus i use it in cooking so i wanted to see how much I, or how well i wanted to see how much or how quickly i would go through having 
12 cans on hand as opposed to buying like you know two or three or four here um and then having to order from you know thrive when i'm not necessarily placing an order because i'm out of something so like i said anything i can get in bulk i absolutely want to do that and if it's going to help me and keep me from <laughs> spending excess money at the grocery store then i absolutely want to do that too so that is everything i got from azure this go round um the things that i want to comment on so the last order i did um order some produce and I did make a comment that you know I'm not really certain that the produce are a wise buy from them if you live on the east coast especially if you are in a situation where you can get locally sourced fresh produce now that may not be for everything because they do have like um crates of fruit that they sell and i'm sure some fruits travel much much better than others so i'm sure if you're ordering like citrus or apples or you know peaches or something like that things that are picked um either ahead of their like ripe period or that are hard skin i'm sure those will be fine but because a lot of the produce are organic um i ran into some issues with some of the potatoes that i ordered the last time so i will say that the sweet potatoes they were white sweet potatoes that i had were absolutely delicious the yams were absolutely delicious um the mirasaki sweet potatoes i think the quality of those they weren't they didn't really meet my expectations um they started going bad a lot quicker than i was actually expecting so I, don't, I won't say that I wouldn't order them again. I probably wouldn't order as many as I did if I did order them again. Um, and the reason I say that I would probably order them is because Mirasaki potatoes, a lot of people, that's not something that's just sold um, commonly, right? So it's one of those things you kind of get it from where you can. And they were good. Of course they were, but I think for what I was expecting for the general size of Murasaki pota uh, sweet potatoes and just the overall lasting ability, those didn't meet my expectations. The red potatoes, those actually held up pretty well and I think I still have some, so let's take a look at them. So I finished one bag. This is the second bag. Now I bought those potatoes in what, August? It is October. We have some sprouting, which it's not terrible, but the potatoes are still hard, so they are still good. These are something that I want to use up or um, preserve in some way pretty soon because obviously they've started sprouting. I don't want them to try to grow into plants, but I was really, really impressed with these. Now, I don't know if that was a, uh, we got lucky and you know, the potatoes were freshly picked virtually and had just gotten shipped to them and they were shipping them out. Or if that is just the quality of this potato from this particular farmer, it was really good, which means obviously like the potato didn't really have, the crop didn't have issues growing, attacks, disease or any of that for it to stay this fresh this long. So really, really impressed with these. Um, I think the purple potatoes, those were not my favorite. I would not order those again from them. I think I struggled with the size on those potatoes, but also those were pretty much like the first ones to sprout and go bad. We didn't even get to eat all of them. And that was kind of disappointing because they weren't even around for two weeks before I had to like really throw them out. So there were some products that were really really good and there was some that i was just like you know i don't know if i would purchase this again but overall i will say the experience that i've had purchasing from them so far has been really good um the cheeses absolutely if you want to try it the dry goods i think you know just for the fact that you can kind of customize according to your family size, which I think is really important when people are looking to maybe, um, you know, if you have like a prepper pantry, if you're into like prepping in that capacity, or if you just prefer to buy it in bulk because you do a lot of scratch cooking, I think that is like an absolute plus. And then um, for, you know, things like this, um, sustainable, like eco-friendly, uh, brands and buys absolutely worth it and then the butter of course you know because 
butter is just outrageous in the store nowadays but um i will continue to purchase from them obviously once i'm done with like my dry goods and that kind of stuff i probably won't have to buy those things for the next year or so but um absolutely will have things like my um cheeses on steady rotation the rice was really good too i ordered jasmine rice from them love that whole milk butter um whole milk powder absolutely love that in the baked goods and we'll definitely be buying that again so a lot of things to you know i think they have a lot of things for everyone um, I think you just really have to find what works for you. So if you were someone that was questioning whether or not you should give it a try, you know, if you were feeling like, oh, it was overhyped or, you know, you're not really sure, I absolutely think it's worth trying for yourself. But there are a lot of good things that are worth going through finding the drop and spending the little bit extra that it may be to support sustainable businesses. All right, y'all. So if you are still here with me, I so appreciate you and just being here with me through uh, the near end of the video. And since we were talking about seafood and sustainably sourced food, if you are still here, leave me a shrimp emoji down in the comments. So the thing, the last thing I want to share with y'all is a surprise unboxing. So during Amazon's prime big deal, days i think that's how you say that they were having some really good sales now this particular product was not on their prom big deal days but i ended up checking the price and it happened to be about 40 dollars less than it usually is priced at so it is something that i have been wanting and waiting for to add to all of my little garden and preservation tools that I have been building on so that I can make this gardening experience as seamless as possible for myself. And I wanted to share it with you guys. So before I grab the product, try to guess down in the comments and let me know if you got it right once you see what it is. But I went ahead and made another investment in myself and in my ability to be able to preserve food and y'all i am so excited you don't even know but um yes today we are unboxing my canner we are in an electrical household and what that means is i have an electric stovetop range so we cannot can according to general like canning principles now i know that there are pots out there that they say are made for electric and glass stove tops but from the research i've done it has been stated you know by the usda and um i think even you know like bowl in their canning guides and such that you should not attempt um non acid canning on a glass or electric stove top and that boils down to sometimes i guess like the evenness of the surfaces and making sure that the heat is maintained throughout the entire cooking time by the entire pot so i went ahead and invested in uh oh if i could pick it up <laughs> an electric canner so I have been wanting this product for probably as long as I've been gardening. And, you know, sometimes you just have to take your time getting to where you have to get to. <laughs> but I'm so happy I have been wanting this. And I was hinting at it earlier in the video, but I didn't want to say it. But virtually what I intend to do with things like the potatoes and the beans that cannot fit in like my dry storage I will go ahead and can those things up and put them away for easy uh, use at a later time. So I'm excited to share this with y'all. I am going to open this up and see what is going on in here. But this is the um, Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner. Um, it's 12 quart capacity. So I think that it holds, if I'm not mistaken, seven. It might actually be like five five it's either five or seven um it's it looks like five from the box 
of the quart jars. I think it's seven of the pints. And I think if you're doing anything smaller than that, I don't know if it's recommended to do that or not. But um, I imagine if it is, you could probably get more of them in possibly even double sugar. But don't quote me on that. Now I will tell y'all, I am not gonna be the person that's gonna be canning meals out the zoo. That is just not how I get down. Um, I much prefer to have fresh food made, but I am someone that would likely probably can more ingredients, if that makes sense. So things that you need to put into finished products. Um, obviously I'll be canning like sauces and you know, things like that, vegetables, of course, but you know, I'm not looking to have my whole meal in a can. Like that's just not my thing. Um, even as tired as I get of cooking, I don't mind cooking a meal <laughs> if, it, if it means that I'm gonna enjoy what I'm eating. So I guess this is like the little plate that you sit the jars on. Now, I don't know where I'm storing this thing. This thing is huge. <laughs> oh. But I'm also excited about having this to do preservation with. So, I will say, I don't think, um, People really talk about the size of this thing. Like it looks really compact when you see it on somebody's video. This thing is huge. Like this is like a third of my body size is what I feel like. It is nice, but it is big. And I don't need, how do you open this? Let's see, can I open it? Oh, okay, here we go. Turn this out. And then what? Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to break this. I'm going to have to do some research. But I just wanted to share that with y'all so y'all could see it. Um, I appreciate y'all for spending some time with me in my kitchen today. Don't forget to check out the affiliate links in the description box below. Let's keep learning, sewing, and growing together, friends. Until our next garden update. Bye.